That phenomenal audience I just told you about has to be maintained. A million is the least I'm going to accept from now on. It was the best uh, audience that we've had in the 15 years that this show has been running across various platforms. But stand by. My good wife, Gayatri, is in the room. But well, we couldn't afford to pay anyone to do this. So she kindly volunteered. But she has a very, very important set of housekeeping announcements to make about the launch of Moats Extra, a midweek show on a Wednesday, which starts in 10 days time. That's Wednesday, the 14th of October at 8 p.m. London time. For as long as I've been doing the show, people have been saying once a week just isn't enough. So by popular demand, Gayatri, almost entirely on her own, but not absolutely on her own, has put together Moats Extra. Tell us about it, please. Well, it's very simple. It's mother of all talk shows, the show that people love. George Galloway, but bare-knuckled. Bare-knuckled, she said. Don't get that wrong. Bare-knuckled, as in hard-hitting, no gloves. No, it's going to be hard-hitting, gloves off, bloody, and yes, uh, uh, be ready for it, really. Yeah, I mean, uh, it will uh, deal, it will have some ferocious debate on it. And I'm the anti-conspiracy theorist uh, par excellence. So uh, the first show we hope to have Richard Gage, the head of 9-11 Architects and Engineers. We'll have people on the Kennedy story. We'll, have, we'll be oh, diving all kinds, deep. All kinds. We'll be diving deep into historical and also political issues. UFOs. We'll have music as well. And we'll have the music. extra, right? Music like we used to have in the old talk sport days. The old days. And yeah. some of those tracks too, because my musical taste hasn't really moved on. So you can prepare yourself for the return of the top cat. Now, how do people do this, Gayatri? Right, so there are two ways. The first one is through Facebook, your Facebook page, which is George Galloway Official. And with 10 days to go, we're starting the countdown. I'm going to press this button, create event, and then the people can start. That's it now, that's it live. There you go. There's so people can register right now. Yeah, they can start registering. <laughs> they can start registering and reserving their seats for 10 days to come. And on Patreon. The second way is through Patreon. and That's the best way. Because then you just subscribe and you'll never miss a show. Uh, it's $5 a month uh, and you get extras. You get That's five US dollars. Five US dollars. Yeah. Um, it's uh, because you subscribe, you get some extras. You're going to get behind the scenes before and after the show, which uh, can be bloody as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can catch me buttoning up my shirt. Yes, and, uh, and, and more. Um, and then uh, the, for the early birds, we've got a 500 uh, sp special gift for them. Yeah, a historic moats uh, souvenir that's to right. uh, mark the launch. Yeah, so, of and the they, they can so that's the first 500 to subscribe on Patreon. That's uh, www.patreon.com forward slash George Galloway. And that's that's, it. Uh, just that's select... simple. Yeah. And uh, there it is, by the way, up on the screen. There you go. So Facebook, George Galloway official or on my Patreon, that's patreon.com slash forward slash George Galloway. And it starts, remind everyone. Wednesday, 14th of October. That's 10 days to go. We're starting the countdown now, 10 days to go. Thank you that's very it. much indeed, uh, Gayatri. We have a very young baby, aged eight weeks this weekend, to whom Gayatri must now speedily return. Uh, but as I said in the introduction, uh, this phenomenal audience of 1.2 million, is all thanks to RT and to SputnikNews.com. If not for Sputnik, if not for RT, this show would have disappeared last year. They rescued it and they built it into a worldwide phenomenon. And I will always be grateful to them for that. And this show will continue every Sunday forever as long as God gives me breath that I can guarantee you. This is the mother ship on RT and on sputniknews.com. So you can watch on Facebook, you can watch on YouTube, you can watch on Twitter, you can even watch on Instagram, you can watch on Twitch. You know the drill, as Joe Biden 
might say, although not quite so eloquently speaking, of Joe Biden and his rival, uh, Donald Trump. The Manhattan Muller uh, that broke every rule, every piece of politesse, of manners, decency in a debate was broken by the Manhattan Muller in Cleveland earlier last week. Joe Biden, though, looked to be a feeble and frail and lost old man. And that's despite having something in his ear where somebody told him where he was, what day it was, what office he was running for, and what he should say. And despite all that, he looked like Floyd Patterson in the ring with Mike Tyson. But Mike Tyson without the class in Donald Trump's case. It was a stairhead brawl. It was a barroom stramash. Nobody yet knows what the impact of it would have played out as because no sooner had it finished and therein lies a potential tale. Donald Trump was diagnosed as being positive to the COVID-19 epidemic. The one that he said originally was a hoax. The one that he said would disappear. The one that he said would disappear when the weather got warm. That was last February and March. Well, it's been warm and it's getting colder again. And not only has it not disappeared, it's now hospitalized him. He said that you might be able to treat it with the sunlight, maybe even inject sunlight somehow, disinfectant somehow. But none of that was relied upon by him in the Walter Reed Memorial Hospital in Washington. He got basically the, a mixture of the Chinese and Cuban uh, treatment for the coronavirus, which is, of course, the greatest of ironies because he won't let anyone else in the United States get that treatment. And indeed, most Western governments are doing everything that they can to make sure that no politically inconvenient source of a vaccine or a treatment for the coronavirus makes it through so that the big multinational drug companies get the gig if indeed they can ever come up with the goods, which is questionable in my opinion. I told you last week I have asked the Russian ambassador if I can have uh, the Sputnik V Russian vaccine, I'll even take it live on air on the show. I'm still waiting for the necessary permissions to come through uh, to have that because I trust the Russian doctors in a way that I would not trust the, the big multinational drug companies who are producing whatever they're producing entirely for the profit, entirely for the uh, uh, fiscal uh, achievement of their shareholders and their well-remunerated directors. I'd rather go with Russia or Cuba or China and I'll take the vaccine from any of them. And indeed, as I said, even live on air. But the big question is, if Donald Trump really is, as I've just been told, going to walk out of the hospital tomorrow, that's a very puzzling hospitalization indeed. It was confirmed that he was given oxygen on Friday. So he was given oxygen on Friday, but is fit to walk out on Monday. Well, that really is a miracle. It's one that he should share uh, with all the other millions of people. So similarly stricken all over the world. I hope that he will do that. I hope that Donald Trump has learned his lesson about the coronavirus. And I hope it can lead to a coming together, a committee of the peoples of the world so that we can fight this pandemic together instead of fighting wars alongside it, instead of trade wars alongside it, embargoes, quarantines, sieges alongside it, as well as 
or rather instead of the war of perpetual words, a bedlam, a din of hate coming from capitals against other capitals. But what will the impact be on the presidential election? Will this boost Donald Trump or will it harm him? Will he now look frail, as frail perhaps even as Joe Biden? Is this the battle of the gerontocrats? Is this the battle of the Zimmer frames? Is this the battle of the men with carers? Is this the battle of the men who can't stand up straight? And what does that tell us about the state of United States empire, if it is? We'll be talking to my good friend, Anya Parampil, top journalist at the Grey Zone Project, about all things Americana during the first hour of the show. But you know that if there's a war going on, we will be the ones properly to cover it. And that's why in the second hour, uh, we have the intrepid war reporter, star war reporter Murad Gazdiev from RT, who's in the zone, in the zone where cluster bombs are being dropped on cities, where all forms of war have been unleashed from the air and from the ground. A war that has now involved openly Turkey, President Erdogan, who has pledged his troth to the Azerbaijan government in crushing Nagorno-Karabakh, which is an enclave of Armenian people inside Azerbaijan, which for many years past has had its autonomy, and that autonomy was won in an ugly way uh, with the purging of Azerbaijani people, civilian people, from the disputed territory of Nagorno-Karabakh. But we cannot have Turks uh, promising a final solution for Armenians uh, because we've been down that road before. We have seen the genocidal attack on the Armenian people over a hundred years ago, no doubt, uh, but still vivid in the historical memory of all Armenians and their friends all over the world. And they have many friends all over the world. We have to avoid uh, this conflict spiraling out of control, spiraling into a Muslim versus Christian armed conflict, spiraling into a Turkey versus Russia armed conflict. Because of course, in the end, Russia is the guarantor of Armenia, of its security. It has a treaty with Armenia. If Armenia is attacked, Russia must come to her defense. And we must avoid that. A war between Turkey and Russia would of course be a war between NATO and Russia in the Caucasus, on top of the oil fields. What could possibly go wrong? This war, as I tipped you off about last week, is deadly serious, and it's getting more serious by the minute. And we will give it the attention in this show this evening that it thoroughly deserves. And of course, finally, and running through all of these stories, because of course, <laughs> if there's a war in the Caucasus, on top of collapsing economies throughout the world and on top of a pandemic which has killed a million people so far, then we'll be compounding misery upon misery upon misery and we must stop it. And when will someone get to grips with the coronavirus? I can't speak of other people's countries with any great exactitude, but I can speak about my own. Most people in Britain no longer understand 
the regulations in place in our country, not least because there are several, multiple actually now, multiple different regulations applying to our citizens. I don't just refer to the different scheme in Wales, the quite different scheme in Scotland, the different scheme in England, but now regional schemes and regulations in different parts of all of these countries. And nobody any longer knows with any real confidence what these regulations are for, what they are achieving, what the opportunity cost of them is in terms of health outcomes for people with other ailments, other problems, other often desperate and indeed life-threatening needs. We no longer have confidence in our Prime Minister's ability to steer us through these troubled waters. At least I don't. You can let me know if you disagree. Still less have we got confidence in these jokers that pop up as experts at the podium in Downing Street, panicking the population, terrifying them with the possibility of exponential, multiple, multiplication, uh, growth of cases, which hasn't happened, might yet, but hasn't happened. In other words, it's a dog's breakfast. And I, for one, believe that it's time that we appoint a COVID czar in this country. Somebody with credibility on all sides of the argument. Someone who's not a doctor, if war is too important to be left to generals, then big policy decisions are too important to be left to doctors. But neither someone who's a politician, uh, because partisan politics uh, will be suspected in anything that she or he says or decides. Uh, but I'm a believer that the buck has to stop somewhere. And that... Our bucks are being scattered everywhere and to little effect. So I'm calling, and I'll put this to the Moats medic, Dr. Ranjit Brar, in the third hour of the show for a big shakeup in Britain's response to the coronavirus. You tell me what you think. We've got a poll running. What will be the impact of President Trump's COVID-19 diagnosis? Will he, A, admit it's serious, B, make a miracle recovery, C, remain president for the rest of his life, which is a double meaning, dear folks. You can vote on my Twitter feed, at George Galloway, on that. After this 60-second break, it's my good friend, Anya Parimpel, from the United States of America. Stay tuned. <laughs> 